Energy, and more specifically renewable energy, is at the forefront of most governmental agendas, including oil-rich nations like Saudi Arabia. I'm here with Paddy Padmanathan, Tama Al-Shahan and Rajid Nanda to speak about how and why this major policy change is going to be implemented. Well, Paddy, let's start with you. And of course, Saudi Arabia is a leading oil producer, but there has been talk of it embracing its renewable energy policy. How likely is this to happen? Firstly, we have abundant resources and we have land that is available to deploy uh, renewable energy. Uh, secondly, we actually have the demand, uh, demand in our part of the world of electricity. Demand is growing at about 9% per annum. So we need more and more new energy capacity. Provided we price fossil fuel, which is the alternative that we have available to generate electricity at the market price, already renewable energy is the most competitive uh, solution for a segment of the demand curve. And of course, finally, we have a very young population that we need to provide employment opportunities and economic value creation strategies. If we can develop this as a new source, we have an unbeatable opportunity to create a new industrial platform. So Tama, over to you now. And how developed are renewables in the GCC region? Currently, not that much. We are having a lot of potential. We have uh, the highest radiation uh, in the world. Also, we are blessed with uh, a lot of uh, wind potential, geothermal, uh, and we are waiting for this to get developed. So what's the major challenges for renewables in the region today? A lack of understanding of the true cost of producing electricity using uh, what we use today, fossil fuels, not only by the public, but also even by some of the important policymakers. When you have got electricity retailing at three cents per kilowatt hour, and the cheapest cost of producing renewable energy is 12 US cents per kilowatt hour, of course, uh, common sense says, how on earth is this going to be affordable? Um, why do you think this is ever going to happen? Well, but the reality is that we are producing and dispatching electricity at three cents per kilowatt hour only because we are consuming our own oil at $4.40 a barrel instead of the world market price of 100. And we are consuming gas at 75 cents per million BTU compared to uh, whatever you want to take as a gas price. What the policy makers uh, have recognized uh, is that uh, obviously the demand for energy is growing at about 9% and therefore the consumption of oil is also going to grow con uh, committently. Uh, and therefore uh, there is a need to uh, look at alternative ways to save uh, this uh, fuel. At the same time it uh, coincides with uh, a decline in the cost of producing rene renewable energy. So all of this put together, uh, what it means is that um, there is a solid case for uh, moving into uh, renewables, uh, reduce oil consumption, and therefore diversify the energy mix. There is a healthy debate in the region about the renewable, use of renewable energy, as, uh, from economical viability, technical suitability and reliability for our market. We at Aqua Power encourage these healthy debates and also participate in uh, educational uh, campaign. Well, Rajid, Aqua Power set quite an ambitious target three years ago that 5% of your portfolio would be renewable energy in, within the next five years. How is this going? Today we manage 23.5 billion uh, US dollars of uh, generation and uh, desalination water uh, portfolio. Of this, about uh, one and a half billion dollars is uh, in the renewable sector. Now what is happening is essentially all the procurers and uh, the generators in our target markets have realized that renewables is an important component of the energy uh, mix going forward and there has been an escalation in terms of uh, the requirement for energy uh, coming from renewable sector. Currently, over the next 12 months, we are uh, preparing investments to the tune of 15 billion US dollars, of which about 50 percent, seven and a half billion US dollars, is in the renewable sector. What's interesting also from the experience that you are seeing just with us is that it's perfectly plausible, as you can see from this anecdotal evidence, if you extrapolate it, that within the next two decades, more than 30% of energy will start to get generated using renewable energy in the MENA region. Paddy, Rajid, Tama, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.